One of the most important parts about being comfortable and working productively with the iPad is your ability to manage the apps because nearly everything on this machine is based on, well, an app. So if you can't manage them, you'll find yourself frustrated. I'm going to take you through a few quick techniques and a few quick tips to show you how to manage and take care of your applications. The first one you'll realize is obviously you can swipe back and forth and get to your different apps, but you'll notice down here you have a home row that sticks there. And yours may be different than mine because yours may be uh, factory set to default down here, but we're going to change that in a second. Much like all of the other things within iPad, to manage, we make things shake. And I know I keep saying that, but it keeps being true. So I'm going to go ahead and push and hold this icon until all of my apps are jiggling. You'll notice even the home row is shaking. So now once I have things jiggling, shaking, and quaking, I am able to manage my applications. By that I mean I can move them around, apply them, delete them, you'll see here in just a second, and I can also create folders or bins out of them. And here's how we do that. First thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to show you actually how to just move something like this iTunes app to a brand new screen or brand new page. In order to do that, all you have to do is grab a hold of it after it's shaking, and I could just plop it right here in the middle of my screen, but if I want to move from page to page, I hover towards the edge of my page and I wait for just a second until it hops to the next page. And I can bring it back here, and I'm going to land it right, oh, someplace right here in the middle of page three, it looks like. Now I have all of my apps on page three, they're all jiggling, and you're going to notice some of these applications have little tiny black X circles, their buttons or badges up in the top left corner. That means that I can actually delete or get rid of that application. It's not going to permanently delete it out of your iTunes account, which is fantastic because if you ever want to reinstall it, it's free, you don't have to purchase it again, and you can easily add it back on here. So if you accidentally delete something, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one right here. If I accidentally delete it, which is not very easy to accidentally do because you have to say, yes, I want to delete this. It goes away, but I can easily reinstall it through the App Store for no money, no cost to me, even if I paid $50 to begin with. It remembers that you paid for it, and it's still free. But you'll also notice there are a few applications like iTunes, or if I flick back here to the beginning, all of these applications have no black X's, no black badges on them. That's because when they're factory installed by Apple, they won't let you delete them. Not a big deal. You can, if you want to, take those apps that you don't like and certainly move them to a page way at the end that you may not ever visit if they really bother you that much. You're also going to notice that you can do something else with them, which is you can put them in a folder that you can shove off someplace that you'll never use again either. Now I'm backed out here, I'm going to show you how to create folders out of an app. First thing you do is you touch and make them jiggle, just like everything else. And once you do that, you can hover over things, but if you're not careful, if you go just on the edge of something, all you're going to do is make that app jump around like you see me doing right here. But if you're careful and you just hover straight over the top of it, you'll notice you get a new, let me do that one more time, you get a new option right here. You hover over the top and you let go, it creates that folder for you now and it automatically labels it or names it what it believes you would like to name it. And it is based on that category that you find in the App Store typically. But if I click there and I have my cursor and then just the keyboard pops up and I can use the backspace and I can rename this to contact info or something like that. There we go. And so now I have my new folder called contact info. I'm done. And if I click out of here, Things are still jiggling out here, but now you'll notice my bin right here, my folder is called contact info, and you can kind of see that there are two tiny little icons in there representing that I have two apps inside this folder. If I make it stop shaking like this, I can still access that folder, they're still in there, but you're now going to notice I can no longer touch up here and rename this folder. If I want to rename the folder, I have to touch and make things shake again. Once they're shaking, that gives me the ability to come in and rename something. So once I've renamed it, hit done again, get out of here. So I have this folder. The nice part is you can put 20 apps in any single folder. So I grab a hold of the Game Center, 
toss it in there. Videos or photo booth, toss it in there. Watch this though, if I try and grab the newsstand, for whatever reason, it will not let me put it in there. Newsstand for sure, and there may be other apps out there, will not let you combine it with another app. I'm not sure exactly why, but it's just the way it is. So now I have four apps in here, and as you can see, they're all lined up, and as I add 20, it ex begins to expand on its own. If I wanna pull an app out of here, I have to make sure, again, that they're jiggling, and once they're jiggling, I can just pull them out of my folder like so, and I am all set. And one last little caveat, no matter how many I pull out, if there's still one left in that bin, the bin or folder stays there. If I wanna get rid of that folder, I drag it out of the folder and the folder evaporates. It's no longer there. You can, like I said, put 20 apps in any given folder and you can create as many folders as you want variably, which allows you to put thousands and thousands and thousands of apps on your iPad, which could be a problem here, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Now that I have these things jiggling, though, I want to show you one more thing. Remember this home row down here that stays put as I flick through? If I want to change this home row, all I have to do is make things jiggle like they are now, and I can just grab a hold of the, them and pull them off or on as I see fit. And I can even add new apps down here. There we go. I can add up to six. That's the maximum number that I can put down here. That's it for being able to move your apps around and being able to delete or add them. If I click this, there's a couple more things that I want to show you though for managing apps. One is, remember how I said you could have thousands of apps on here? Well, it would get really, really old to have to flick through tons of pages and even more cumbersome if you have hundreds of folders located all around with 20 apps in each of them because you can't even read the names until you get inside of the folder. So it can become a frustrating thing to try and drill down and find the apps that you want. Well, enter Spotlight Search, which is right here. Whenever you're on the home page, wherever you are, so I can be down here at the end like this, and you can tell where I am because of these little lighted dots down here. If I simply hit the home button one time and then flick this way, or if I hit the home button one time and then one more time, it will bring up the spotlight search. Spotlight search allows me to search the entire iPad. And we went over in settings what spotlight search can search for, but one of the things you can search for is an actual app. And if I type an AP, you'll notice I can all of a sudden grab a hold of the App Store or Anna Twist or App Finder or App Shopper all because I started typing in the letters AP. Instead of going and searching my entire iPad, all I had to do is flick and type a letter or two, and then I can grab a hold of the App Store if I so desire, or even iBooks, Keynotes, Pages. And like I said in the settings, you can mess with your mail systems, whether or not you want to check that or not. But that is the beauty of the Spotlight Search. End your searching for apps and just type in some letters, and find it almost instantly. Last thing I want to show you about apps and managing them are the running apps. If you take your four fingers from down here and you push up to get those running apps or if you double press that home button quickly, let me show you that one more time, one, two, your running apps will show up. Running apps are any apps that you have most recently been in or messed around with. So the last app I was in was settings, before that was apps, before that was mail, and so on, all the way down the line. All of these apps are called running apps for a reason, because they are running small packages or small little code in the background that do a couple of things. They can eat up your data or your Wi-Fi uh, bandwidth, but they most certainly also can eat up your battery power. And as you can imagine, having 10, maybe 20 open is not a giant deal. But once you have 30, 40, possibly even 50 or 100 running apps open, you're gonna start noticing your battery draining much, much faster. So you don't really want to bog down the processor with all these behind the scenes programming and start sucking your battery away. What you wanna do is kill these running apps. And as you may guess, obviously we're going to make these things shake again to kill them. I'm going to press this Netflix icon right here and they all begin to jiggle. This time I have a red badge instead of a black badge. What that means is I can kill it out of my running apps but not erase it or eradicate it out of my iPad. When I'm doing this, I am not deleting them off the iPad at all. 
you'll notice I'm about to get rid of Safari out of the running apps here. And now if I click up here and look around, there's Safari. Still pleasantly planted on my home row of my home screen. I did not delete it. I just got rid of it out of my running apps. However, I just opened it. So guess what? It's not only back in my running apps, it was the very last app that I used. And if you're an educator, you can even use this as a little accountability piece. You can walk over to Jimmy and take your fingers, slide up, and see exactly what apps he's just been in or just been using. And maybe he wasn't supposed to be in iBooks today. And you now you can tell, most certainly, not only was he there, he was there one step before. These are all of the tools for just being able to manage the apps and the apps icons on your iPad.